My name's Anthony Morrow, CEO of American Eagle Gold, and right now we're in the uh, we're in the kitchen of our NAC project at camp. Uh, we'd be outside, but you know it's better audio and no mosquitoes and a lot quieter. But with me right now, we have Robert Sin, and Robert's known as Goldfinger on CEO.ca, big following on Twitter. Does a lot of podcasts with us. He's up here for the site visit, and right here, right right now, is that uh, Neil Prouse. Neil Prouse is. You know, the brains behind this, uh, this project that we've been working on so far, our lead geo at NAC. And the very end here, uh, last but not least, is, is Nate Smith. And we've got people from all these different angles, but Nate's a big follower, a mine engineer. Um, he's had quite a following kind of finding NAC at a very early stage for a lot of investors. So I thought we'd take this time and just kind of do a little bit of an open forum. Probably Robert and Nate asked a lot of the questions, the majority for Neil, but I always say the best fertilizer is the footsteps of the farmer. So it's good to bring investors over to the site, give them an idea of this really can be a mine someday. The infrastructure is amazing. You can drive a golf cart right onto it and it helps that we've been hitting mineralization after mineralization with our holes. Right now we're on our fourth and fifth holes of our season, 15,000 meter program. And you know we're excited to have people here and these guys just checked out the core shack went to the rigs and I guess I'll, I'll let Rob start off the question if he has one. Thank you, Tony. Uh, yeah, it's a pleasure to be here in the Babine, you know, region of BC. First time I've ever been up here, town of Smithers. It is actually a great place. I told you. It's a pretty cool town. I was impressed. I yeah. thought you were, you were being a little, you know, exaggerating. You would live there. I would live there. I would, I would absolutely live in Smithers, BC. The brewery, <laughs> there's a McDonald's, there's a gym. There's, there's a everything. Yeah, and amazing. great nature. I mean, the nature here is out of this world. Absolutely incredible. So first question for Neil. Um, my takeaway just from a few hours being here and, you know, seeing the, the news you put out on Wednesday, seems like the drill program is going really well. It's going pretty fast. You're what, three holes already done. Um, tell us about what you've learned from the first three holes of this year's program and where it's guiding you. Yeah. So the first hole we drilled was the natural follow-up from hole 17 last year. Uh, we're starting in the south of our main western zone along the western flank of the Babbian Porphyry Stock. And the plan is to successively move north and infill between the historical south zone and the historical north zone. This is all quickly becoming apparent to us. And like we've theorized, that it's all part of one larger main zone. We've hit mineralization in that zone where there was historically a gap in drilling. Uh, and we're three holes into that trend now. We've got another couple to do before we link the two with 100 meter spaced holes. Uh, but we've seen mineralization in all the holes so far. Uh, very consistent with what we've seen in the deeper parts of the north zone and the deeper parts of the south zone drilling to the west. So very, very encouraged there. Um, our second hole was collared just to the north of our historical south zone, the Goldrich Stockwork, went through some of the stockwork and then projected much further to the southeast. It actually ended at about 950 meters depth uh, to test really what, what is effectively was undrilled before. Uh, there was some shallower holes above where we were drilling. Um, but hitting into different rocks and different mineralization. Uh, we were really encouraged. Uh, we're still waiting for assays, obviously, so this is all speculative, but visually we, we, we intersected some pretty compelling mineralization in, uh, in conglomerates. Whether those are the same conglomerates we're hitting off to the west, there's some differences. We're not seeing as many uh, porphyry clasts in them, so these might be an older conglomerate, but it's still, it's that same porous host rock. So it's, it's good to see. Um, and yeah, uh, that's coupled with, like in the, the news release, some more <laughs> focused surface mapping from our, our prospecting team. And they've uncovered some, as to yet unknown to, to us and historically, uh, new outcrop that has mineralization and in that south zone that kind of overlies that IP embayment zone, that interruption in the, the broader IP donut. So there's a lot of different pieces, there's a lot of stuff going on. 
Um, but it's all really encouraging so far. And so we're still sticking with the plan. We're systematically testing from the south to the north. Uh, we're going to take a bit more time to properly hone in and focus on this embayment zone. That's going to mean a few more IP lines, a few more days of, of targeted prospecting and output crop mapping in there because we're finding a lot more than uh, we thought we would and we're finding a lot more than historical operators did as well. It's pretty thick bush, but if you know what to look for, there's actually quite a bit of outcrop exposed on some of the flanks of the ridges. So it's, yeah, there's a lot of till cover, but there's enough poking through that's that's giving us some some good positive encouragement so far. Um, yeah, and then our third hole of the program is again 100 meters north of uh, that uh, that hole 18 where we started on the on the main zone. So yeah, and now our new holes are following up the stock work zone for rig two and continuing to step north on the on the western flank. Okay, um, I, I'll just give you a follow up to that, and I'll you know hand it over to Nate. Um, so hole nine, you know, last year was this big, wild step out to the southeast. Uh, you know, you had a, a fairly good hit there, but it wasn't, you know, like a one, you know, one or, you know, 2% copper, you know, kind of hit. Um, so to target the embayment zone, you have to drill the other way. You have to drill to the south, right? And hole nine was to the north? Hole nine is to the north. And what we were doing with hole nine is going on the knowledge we had that as we got deeper, closer to the porphyry stock, and that was specifically drawing on knowledge from the north, from hole four, uh, that right up against the porphyry stock at depth was looking pretty good. Uh, but there's clearly something different happening along that IP embayment zone. There is either a, a different distribution of dikes coming off of it, uh, or the host rock is different. It's, it looks to be sedimentary, but it's, uh, it's not as coarse grained. Um, so again, there's porosity factors there in terms of what dictates how well that rock is going to host mineralization. So there's some differences for sure. Uh, and that IP embayment as well, we just don't have a lot of information of what is actually causing that. Is it another small stock-like body? Is it a successive, you know, like sheet of dikes that are coming through along that trend and interrupting that, uh, that signature, is it a different host rock? Uh, so there's questions that need to be answered there. And really the best way we're gonna test that is by integrating some of that surface information we get uh, with some some better targeted drilling. And yeah, I think based on what we've seen so far, it's a zone that, that warrants testing, but we, we should do it right. You know, we're not gonna just willy-nilly plunk holes in there. We're gonna try and, try and target it as best we can, so. Okay. Yeah, <clears throat> I guess I could start with some, my own comments on the fly-in. Uh, Covering two site today was actually a, a, a very revealing arrangement, right? Like we saw, we did the fly over uh, or the existing Bell Grand Isle, and you could see how those were successful lines at the time. And then coming into the site today, even you see that you know it's a gradual slope. There's not a lot of elevation. A, mm -hmm. The area is clear cut right now for access, which is great. But it also it lends to the future of if this were to become a deposit, you could see. You know, the, the favorability around you know reduction in strip on account of much of the mineralizations at that surface so those were some some big takeaways for me here today and then uh seeing some of the initial pour and talking about the the holes that kick off the season it looks like there's success you know following up on last year's program maybe could you comment on has there been any additional develops i mean we talk about NAC being a complicated project and complicated in a good way has there been some additional complications we'll say uh, that to the good side or otherwise i mean Geological, for sure. Uh, with these systems, there's there's clearly a lot going on at NAC, and it's not a matter of, oh, we have questions and they get answered immediately by the drill. Uh, instead of answers, we're finding more questions, right. like what you alluded to, which is a good thing. We're we're seeing uh, you know a bit of a difference in our understanding of uh, where our sulfide speciation is, is distributing. We've got a bit more of a depth control than we initially thought, uh, as opposed to a straight out, you know changing from our more copper-rich sulfides or more iron-rich sulfides as we go to the west. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and we're seeing, you know, we're, we're seeing new things all the time, um, which is really kind of cool. Um, yeah. And then looking at the, the, the approach to the IP embayment zone, it, it's interesting that it's, you know, it, it's becoming um, uh, another area to open up, right? And it, so you did mention that you're going to continue to do some additional IP work on it. Is that correct? Yeah. Yep. Okay. And so uh, 
I'm, I'm assuming that the, the step outs will look like something similar in between hole nine, or there's there going to be a, a more localized work set right on top of the embayment? Uh, we'll see what the initial results pull out. We can, we can look at the, the pseudo sections fairly quickly mm -hmm. uh, from that IP, but ideally we would do two or three <laughs> more long lines to the south to properly oh. characterize that. The, the teams have found some mineralized outcrop quite a bit further to the south than we were expecting to find. And that could be for a number of reasons. There's, we know there's mineralized dikes there. We know from the historical drilling that near surface there was some sporadic high grade. So we want to make sure that, you know, before we go about putting drill holes on these, that we, we do our diligence, right? It's a pretty expensive endeavor to get in there, especially that's not part of the clear cut mm. property. So access is a little bit trickier. So we just want to be extra certain. And that IP will, it's, it's provided a really good guide so far. Again, it's not the silver bullet, but when we couple that with all the other information we have, we can just make the best decisions. Okay. And can we talk a little bit about, so last year there was the idea around the IP shoulder in the work that's being done on the West, uh, from the results that you're seeing so far this season, is it looking like we're seeing a good continuity of that shoulder signature as being a, a target area? Yeah, I mean, it is. And, and it's following up on the work that that Charlie has done in the off season and really identifying the different dike phases and pulling out the dikes, which can be really difficult to discern from the really dark altered sandstones in places. Uh, that plays a really, important role in prepping the ground for hosting the mineralization. And that may well be what the IP shoulder is imaging. Mm. Uh, we know from our drilling this season, we have some lithologies that don't host the mineralization as well. They host vein mineralization, similar to the granodiorite stock. Um, but then above and below those, we have really nice dissemination. So the, the IP shoulder isn't, you know, it's not a perfect correlation, but it, it has proved a really good guide and it's still holding. So. Yeah, it's, we think that could be very valuable in the south, uh, the embayment zone. Oh, absolutely. And then the other one, the other model that we uh, took the time to go through, the speciation model, uh, with the shell that was used to extrapolate for that speciation modeling, are you finding that that is also correlating now with the most up-to-date holes or? Well, no, so uh, that's part of one of the questions that's being raised. Our only information at depth outside of the porphyry stock was from holes that were drilled collared to the east and drilling to the west. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what we started to see as those holes naturally got deeper, we got further to the west and we would start to see, you know, we go from more bornite rich mineralization to calcopyrite rich to pyrite to pyrotite. Mm -hmm. um, we're collaring now from the west and drilling to the east. And what we're finding is at depth, we're finding pyrite and pyrotite. Uh, so it looks like that's more of a function of depth. The, the bornite, the chalcosite bornite Calcopyrite is still very much a function of, of depth and proximity to the porphyry stock. Uh, but the, the iron sulfides seem to be more controlled by their, their vertical position than their, their lateral position. So yeah, it's, it's just, uh, as we get more information, we, we modify the model and refine it. And so, you know, by the end of this season, we'll have a much clearer picture of what's going on there. And that's going to help us in subsequent seasons. So. You know, one of the key priorities for this season is to fill in the north and south zone, or at least put some more holes in there. Um, how many holes will you put into that gap area between the north and south zone by the, uh, you know, by the end of this season? Uh, right now, we have five holes planned in there and then another two holes stepping a bit further to the north because we see some good indications to the north that that, that likely continues. Uh, the next holes will be fence holes along that. Uh, you get a lot of really good geological information from fence holes and you can really start tying those units together and it'll help us put together a more cohesive geological model between the south zone and the north zone. Right now we have some really good section information from the north and the south, but they're separated by almost 600 meters of distance, right? Uh, and so that's putting a lot of weight on interpolation. Uh, whereas on 100 meter centers, we get a lot better information. And if we do those fence holes along that, so, you know, stepping out 100 meters to the west and 100 meters to the east and drilling parallel holes. So we may get up to nine holes, 10 holes along that zone, depending on where we decide to do the fence holes al along which sections um, by the time the season's done and, and probably a few more as well. So, yeah, that's going to be how we go about targeting it. All right. So, Tony, I'm going to throw you a forward-looking question. Uh, 
In fact, I'll throw two at you mm. because you know you're good at the forward looking question. Um, is there a chance that you might expand this year's program? And what you know would it take for you to expand it? And how big can this 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 body of ore be? Whoa, okay. Uh, <laughs> Can we expand the program? Absolutely. Um, you know, we're budgeted for this year and next year. Um, we'll have to see how the assays go. I'm always a glass half full guy and I'm optimistic. And if it makes sense for our cost of capital and we keep on hitting great stuff, we won't stop. Um, but we're going to make that decision, you know, probably a little bit further on in the year once we have more information. It's a little bit too early to tell, but absolutely. You know, if we have the tiger by the tail and we're hitting men and we're starting to figure things out, and we start piecing these things together and you know the area where the IP and Bayman zone is coming out great and we find that jewel box and our stock rips well you know our cost capital is going to be extremely low and we want to fast forward kind of our goal which is essentially prove that this thing can be a mine and someone wants to eventually take us out that's why we're here we're not here to develop or, or build a mine we're we're explorers so in terms of how big this can get um, you know, maybe that's a better question for Nate, but you know, I'll, I'll take a shot at it. The target's at least a billion tons for me. I think that's, you know, kind of a milestone that I think companies want to get to, to make other companies want to take them out uh, in terms of scale. But, you know, I won't, don't, I'm not worried about a resource. I think any company that comes in your data room and looks at your data, they're not looking at SRK's resource. They're, they're doing their own together and I think those resources when you put them out to the market they kind of create a glass ceiling to how big you can be and I think if you keep on hitting great stuff and you keep on pushing the boundaries remember we've only touched maybe 25 30 percent of you know the whole target that we can go around this porphyry stock so if we keep on building out and there's you know you know they say complicated or body I don't think it's complicated I think it's atypical uh, but atypical things are great. What's an atypical ore body? Grassberg, you know, Escondida, all, all the big ones. But, you know, we have the IP embayment zone. We have the north to south zone. Um, we have that, quote unquote, jewel box, don't roll your eyes, Neil. Uh, <laughs> and we have, that cop we have that court stock works. We have a lot of places to focus. We want to focus. And I don't even talk to you about, like, the northeast zone and going around. So as long as we keep on hitting those areas and pushing out the boundaries, kind of going around the clock, I don't see a point of ever kind of doing a resource. Let someone else come in and do it or take us out. And the perfect kind of model that I have for that is, is Great Bear. They just kept on drilling and drilling and drilling and they got the stock from $1 to I think $29 and Ken Ross took them out. Ken Ross is doing great with it, but they never did a resource. So uh, that's kind of my answer for that. And you know, you guys have done a great job with being um, very present to the market, speaking on a regular basis. You've got good, you know, news flow. Um, but everybody always wants to know when are we going to get the first assays because that's what really uh, matters. So sooner than you expect. <laughs> but as Neil said, between now and when the assays are ready to be put out. Okay. So um, yeah, look, it's. Uh, but maybe in the next month. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I mean. I'm pretty good. You guys, I got I got a question. Oh, okay. So look, you you, you came to site. Oh. Um, you know what was your big takeaway from from being here? Besides the infrastructure, obviously, it's uh, we took a helicopter in, not because we had to, but I think being able to look at things from the aerial view and see the other mines and see how close it is to town, and kind of seeing the terrain that's really important. So when we bring investors, you put the investment and you put the helicopter in there because it really does showcase things. But now that you're at site, what's your big takeaway? Well, a few things uh, definitely strike me. I, I like Smithers, so that's a great town to have nearby. Uh, you can fly there in one hour from Vancouver, so that's fantastic. It's not too hard to get out here. Um, you can drive out here, you know, as you said, you can take a barge and then uh, drive. Um, another thing just from the camp, I've been to a lot of camps. This camp is particularly clean. That really stands out to me. Bathrooms are super clean. Um, the cafeteria is really nice. So it's, a, it's actually a very nice camp. Not all camps are this quality. So that stood out. And then the core shack and the employees, everybody's happy, right? So people are in good moods. Uh, that's good body language. That's, that's a good sign for me, I, I, you know, as an investor. I've, I've actually been on some site visits where they had just gotten in some core and they 
had a negative reaction to it in front of me. So uh, that was a gold project like four years ago. So a little different, but um, yeah, I mean, just, just positive attitudes and people want to be here. And that, that speaks to the company that speaks to, uh, you know, what you guys are doing. Yeah, look, that's a, that's a big takeaway. And look, that comes with, with Neil and, and Dave. Like, it's it starts with the leadership and at site. And it, it helps to be on a great project and honestly, one of the greatest places in the world to be to be working. But, you know, when you're taking good mineralization on the ground and everyone's happy, it, it spreads like, like wildfire. And again, these little things help. But having a nice camp and having a breakfast sandwich and being fully fed and, and you know, sleeping in a decent, you know, double bed, it's, it really kind of helps. So... You know, happy people get work done faster that helps us kind of succeed. So it's kind of a circle of life and it's been like that since the very beginning. So, you know, thanks, Neil. So just, you know, Nate, it's, it's funny, you know, Nate comes here and uh, we got a couple investors and it's not just analysts and stuff. It's, it's, it's retail investors that, that follow us and we've become friends with. And I always say, if you invest a dollar with us or a hundred thousand dollars, it's still money that you invested in. And you follow us, and sometimes the retail guys they they bark the loudest, and, and Nate's been a kind of good example of that. And the what, biggest bull ever. <laughs> I watched Nate. I I watched Nate there, and I was telling someone on the plane yesterday, it's like watching my daughter wake up for Christmas, and you see <laughs> Nate around that core. I'm calling his name, and he doesn't even hear me. He's just staring at his core, like jaws open. But uh, it's great to have him around. It's another great positive kind of personality to have, and it's infectious. But. Um, Nate, so what's your big takeaway? Like, this is, you, you're here for the first time. What's your big takeaway being here? Yeah, I mean, I touched on the, the fly-in, seeing what we saw with regards to, say, if this is ever going to be a future project. You're like, yeah, okay, it has the, the footing to do that for sure. Um, touched on the local infrastructure, Smithers being here. That's that's awesome. Grand Isle just over the way. Uh, the camp facilities and outfit that you're running right now is very professional, safe. The ITL team is doing awesome work. Um yeah, and having been part of this project now for so long, right, uh, with you guys pretty much since you kicked off in 2021 when you got the project, 2022 now, seeing it mature, the, the quiet confidence that you're now seeing, you're modeling, and you're now developing the actual drilling, pulling out, is, is lining up. So uh, it, it's been a great journey to be on and, and see with you guys on account of uh, the, the transparency and the openness to share the amount of data that's been made available. It's a real te testament to like a, what I would love to see widely adopted in, in the junior space on account of uh, a lot of juniors, sometimes it's hard to get a little more information out of them or they don't necessarily provide enough information to even do your initial work set, right? So I think you guys have done a great job there. Here on site though, uh, yeah, love to see the initial core out. It's great to see it uh, taking a lot of the boxes that we were looking forward to and then seeing some new surprises too, even. I mean, this IP embayment uh, zone wasn't on my bingo card for exploration this year, and, and here we are into it, and uh, it, so far so good, right? It looks promising. And yeah, I look forward to seeing it further develop, but uh, also, you know, I, I look forward to seeing the initial, you know, the three target sets, right? The high-grade gold zone in the south, connecting the north and, and the south zone, and then hopefully being able to find that high grade zone that fed it all up, right? So, uh, so far so good this season. Okay, well, I think we're gonna wrap it up, but I just wanna give a, I just wanna give a little bit of recognition to some people that probably don't get it all the time, which I think is really important, because it really is a team. So we got a lot, you see Neil and Charlie a lot, but we have a lot of really great geos and non-geos at our site, and it's a cohesive machine, and um, you know, you need these people and it's just really good. So I want to give a shout out to all them, Priscilla, Dinah, Verna, Charlie B. We have a ton of amazing people who will, will grow up and become people like Neil running these teams. Uh, the other person's my uncle. Like, he's the reason why we got on this project. He ended up passing away. I've told the story a bunch, but he had a vision for this being something. And the more we drill deep and when I'm focused on this jewel box, is, that was his kind of original site. I think we just drilled it in the wrong location a little further to the... Uh, West, but um, shout out to my uncle Bernie Kraft. I like I know Bernie likes to get his name out there, but I want to say like he optioned it out to us. He moved to Smithers. There's only pl two places in Canada that you could get BC information, and he got it on microfilm, and he he ended up getting this property. So that's a big reason uh, why we're there. And you know the last they don't talk about our drillers a lot. Um, it's a tough business, but we work with ITL, and uh, they're absolutely amazing. They're getting amazing rates. They're great to work with. And, um, you know, it's employee owned. So, you know, Jay, who's our foreman here, owns part of the company and 
it's nice having guys that have that real reason to succeed. So ITL is hitting out of the park. And, and besides that, just a final thanks to obviously Neil, but these two guys right here, um, they support it. If it weren't for guys like Nate and Rob, we'd be another tree fall in the forest with no around. And we flew over a lot of those trees. So uh, we want to be that volcano that everyone eventually sees and feels. Um, so thanks a lot, guys. And thanks for everyone for continuing to uh, participate. And we'll continue to get news out there. Ask any questions you have. Mm -hmm.